Okay, guys, it's Janet Perez with The Painted Saguaro. And before I get started on showing you how to create the technique on a pottery barn slash uh, Sausalito style dresser, because I've been asked by several of my followers how to create that look, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the products that I use on this project so that you understand what I'm using as we go through the steps. It's really simple, you don't need a whole lot of stuff, um, but I wanna make sure that you have everything that you need, all the tools that you need prior to uh, getting started. Is Well, the first thing I used was I have um, some of the Fresh Start uh, cleaning powder from Paint Couture. I mix it in a spray bottle and uh, with water, with warm water, and I spray it on my piece. And then I use these blue shop towels. They're lint-free, they're fabulous. You only need like two or three of them for an entire piece. Uh, and wipe the whole piece down. I scrub it if it's really, really dirty with a uh, scrub brush. And then I rinse it with a 50-50 combo of vinegar water. Make sure that I get all that residual cleaning agent off of the piece. Let it dry completely, usually overnight. Remove the hardware and then um, I also filled all of the hardware holes with, I filled all the hardware holes with quick wood. It is, in my mind, the best thing to fill um, holes with. It's sort of like a two-part epoxy filler, wood filler in one. It When you open it, it comes out sort of like, I don't know if you remember as a kid, silly putty. It comes out as a putty, and but it's white in the center. It's like a Tootsie Roll. And you kind of meld it together until it's all one color. And then you just fill it into the holes. What I like to do is I like to take a razor blade and scrape the overfill off before it hardens because once it hardens, um, then you have to sand it and that's kind of a pain in the patootie. So, um, but that's what I fill my holes with. Then I, after that dries, I covered the entire piece, top, sides, front, everything, with um, the two-in-one premium primer. So it's a premium plus two-in-one primer. It is a white, I use the white, it's the white bonding and blocking primer. We have it in gray also, but I like the white. I typically like to use white even if I'm painting a dark color over it. Um, and the reason for that is I feel that using white as a base for me personally provides a more true color painted over it. So I'm getting... You know, if I'm painting, uh, even if I'm painting bl black over it, I'm getting a truer black over that white primer. And that's just my own personal opinion. I know everybody has different opinions on that. So the primer dries really quickly. You just need to let it dry for a couple hours and then you can paint over it. But I typically like to wait 24 hours before I start painting the next layer. The base coat that I paint, and I don't show this step because you don't really need to watch me painting a base coat, <clears throat> is uh, Modern Rattan. This is a fabulous color for this technique. It lays down um, just the, the perfect sort of light wood tone, the blonde wood tone that you're looking for when you're creating the Pottery Barn look. So I highly recommend you get this color. So once the Modern Rattan is completely dry, and I only did one coat, you may want to do two coats depending upon your application. I like to lay down the Modern Rattan with a synthetic brush. So I like to use the Paint Couture synthetic brush. It's an angled brush with a semi-short handle, so it gets into all of the areas really easy. It's nice and thick, so you can get along edges and whatnot really nicely. Um, so that's my brush of choice for putting down that base coat of color, okay? The next step, once this is completely dry, is to get your glaze ready. Now, Paint Couture has several different glaze colors already made ready to, to go for you. What I prefer to do, and again, this is a matter of personal preference, but I like mixing and matching and creating my own colors anyway, but I like to get 
the clear glazing base. It's just a clear gel. It looks white in the jar, but when you use it, it's clear. Um, it's just a clear gel. And I pour some into, you know, I like to use my empty containers. I clean them out and I save them. And I like to utilize those. So what I did, I'll show you, it's kind of a mess right now. Because I used an old glazing base jar and I mixed it in that. So what I do is I mixed about this much base of the glazing base. And you can see this was a full brand new jar and I put about that much of the glazing base in. And then I put about, I wanna say maybe three tablespoons of the espresso mineral paint into the glazing base. And it creates the perfect glazing base. And I still have quite a bit left actually, you can see. And then what I do is just to um, extend the dry time even a little bit more, and let me back up just a, a smidge. What glazing base does is it keeps your paint from drying too quickly. So it creates a very smooth, almost gel-like uh, consistency. So when you're spreading it across your piece, you're not getting it to dry as you're brushing and it will stay moist and um, workable a lot longer. What I like to do after I mix my color in with my base, my, my glazing base, is I like to just add maybe a teaspoon or so of water in there as well, which just extends that open time just a little bit more. And um, that's all I do. So, Again, the clear glazing base, or you can buy a premixed brown. Um, and we, like I said, we've got several colors with Paint Couture that you can order, but you want a dark brown glazing base and that's it. Now, as far as the tools go, I already told you, you want a, a synthetic bristle brush. You want a, and I used it last night, hold on. You want a chip brush, and this is just one of those little cheap 50 cent chip brushes. I get them by the box of 50, um, and I wash them and I reuse them. Um, it's really important because these things are prone to lose bristles really quickly, especially when you first start using them. So um, it's really important to condition your brushes. It's important to condition any brush when you first get it but especially these because you don't want bristles flying out, especially when you're doing this technique. So basically to condition them, you wanna run them under some water and then just kind of fluff them and pull at the bristles and you'll see that you'll get a bunch of bristles out of it. So that's the brush you use. And then you wanna use another synthetic brush um, I used this one because it is really nice and thick. I think I've had this for a really long time and it doesn't have, I think it is a zebra. I think I can read that and I think it says zebra on it, but I don't know. But it's just, uh, I've had this for probably five or six years. It's just a nice synthetic thick brush and you use this for the second step of applying the glaze. And then this is the most important tool. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is that, Janet? This is a rubber dog hair removal brush. And I got it on Amazon. It's like $5. But if you're going to be doing this technique, you got to have one of these, you guys. This is a game changer. And I will show you how to use this later on. And then after you use that, you're going to want a, a whisk broom. Um, this is one that I've had, and it's probably not the best choice of whisk broom that you could choose. Um, I probably should have uh, gone down and bought one at Dollar, Dollar Tree Store or Dollar General or whatever, but because um, it's not really very thick, and I lost a lot of bristles on this side. But um, you just want a, a whisk broom to sort of soften the, the strokes out after you use the dog brush. So those are the tools that we're going to be using, and that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy the process here. I hope you learn something from it.
please feel free to ask questions after the video is over and I'm going to be monitoring this video real closely. So, um, sit down, buckle up and enjoy the show. Okay. So the one thing I forgot to mention as I was giving you the intro into the, uh, products and tools that we're using is I did a really solid scuff sand on this because it was very glossy. So here I'm just giving you a really quick overview of adding the primer to this piece. Um, and that's really all that there is to it. I'm not gonna show you this in any depth or detail. And then we're gonna get moving on to the techniques on how to create that striation of the Pottery Barn dupe look. So let's get going. Um, also, just a reminder, I did not show you the steps on painting that first coat of the modern rattan. So this is it all painted. Um, and additionally, just so you know, um, ideally you want a piece for this technique that has drawers that are inset, not overlapping the frame. So you're not having to pull the drawers out, push them in, paint the frame, and then put the drawers back in and all that kind of good stuff. But what I'm doing here is I'm, as I said in the, the uh, precursor, I'm applying the glazing base with that chip brush and then I'm going over it with that synthetic bristle brush. And you only wanna work in small sections because even though you've got a longer open time utilizing the glazing base, you want to make sure that you're um, not working on too big of a section at a time. So just keep that in mind as you're moving forward on this. So I've got the drawer smooth and you can see um, you also don't want to use too much glazing base on there at one time. But here comes that magic tool, that dog hair remover brush. And you want to make sure you keep a straight hand and a level hand um, so that you get those striation marks really level. But you just wanna keep going back and forth and that's really the key. Um, if you don't get it the way you want, see how I just went back over it with my uh, synthetic bristle brush and there comes the lines. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, going through the edges and it's a beautiful thing, it's that simple. It gets a little heavy on the edges on this and that's another reason why you really want you know, a flat drawer front. I picked probably the hardest piece I could have possibly chosen for this technique, but then that broom just softens all those lines perfectly. Again, I'm doing the synthetic brush and when I push this drawer back in, you'll see it a little bit better. But using the synthetic, synthetic brush to smooth everything out, using my dog hair brush to get that striation, those wood grain lines going on there. And then using my whisk broom to sort of fan those wood grain marks out a little bit. It's really just that simple, you guys. I can't tell you, um, this is kind of a no brainer. If you get that rubber brush, it's just that easy. Now here, I probably used a little too much gel of the, the glazing base. It's a little heavy there and um, so I, I'm wiping a little bit of it off of my brush right there to kind of use it as a negative tool right now and remove some of it off. So that's kind of a, a, a key note you wanna remember. When you have a brush with paint, it's a positive tool. When you have a, a dry brush, it's a negative tool and you're removing paint with it. So right here, I'm using that brush as a negative tool. So now I've got just the right amount of the glazing base on there. And I'm bringing that dog hair remover brush back in. And I'm telling you, 
You guys get yourself one of these $5 bristle brushes. And I'm sure that there's other rubber tools out there that will work just the same. But this is just so easy. And I ordered it on Amazon and it was here the next day. So it's not like you have to go hunt one down. I would imagine that if you went to PetSmart or something, you could find one real easy. Now you'll see that there was a little bit of heavy uh, of the glazing base in the edge there. I went back later and just kind of cleaned that up a little bit with um, the whisk broom. But you don't need a whole lot of the, the glazing base on there. I'm being very sparse sparsity with it right here. So spread it on and then get out your little doggy hairbrush And the important thing to do when you're working on a dresser with the drawers like this is you just really want to make sure you get those edges and pay attention to the detail on the edges. Because if you don't, it will probably look kind of funky. That's my only suggestion. If you, I just couldn't find a piece of furniture here that had the kind of drawers that I wanted that wasn't something that I wanted to do a different technique to. So... And personally, you guys know I'm, I'm all about color on pieces and design. Um, <laughs> so this isn't really my own personal style, but I had so many people tell me they wanted to see how to create this look that I'm doing it for y'all, not for me. If this piece doesn't sell literally in like two weeks, I'm going to do something else to it. Maybe I'll slap a big old transfer on the front of it. <laughs> But it's that easy, you guys. Don't be afraid of this technique if it's something you want to do. It's my understanding that this technique sells like wild cakes. And that's it. I'm going to show you now I did the side on this. So again, there's my modern rattan color. And this was really difficult to do from the side. I'm just telling you right now. Here I get that evenish. And see, I got two of these for $10, so that's why now I'm using a blue one because I set the green one down somewhere and I couldn't find it. And another thing I forgot to mention thus far is um, you'll get a buildup on that brush occasionally with um, as it pulls away the, the glazing base. So you want to keep one of those blue towels or a paper towel of any kind. You don't have to use the blue towel. But you want to keep a paper towel handy and kind of wipe it off occasionally so that you don't get a buildup of that glazing gel on the bristles because um, that will cause globs of glazing gel on your piece and you don't want that. So here it is, a close up of the Sausalito aka Pottery Barn look. And I think it turned out pretty nicely. I like the hardware I selected for it as well. Um, I finished it 24 hours after allowing the clear glazing base to dry with the Extreme Guard Flat Top Coat by Paint Couture. Um, that's the top you're looking at there. And I found it to be a fun technique to try out. I probably will never do it again because it's not my personal style, but hopefully you will try it too. If you are going to give it a shot, please let me know how it did work and give us a thumbs up, a follow, and we'll see you next time here on the Paint Couture page. Thanks for watching.